The Central Bank of Nigeria offered 150 billion naira in today's Omo auction. Namdi Wizu, co-managing partner at Commercial Partners, joins me to discuss this and other stories likely to impact Nigeria's money markets. Thank you so much, Namdi, for joining us. My Before pleasure. we go local, I think we have to go global. So this whole talk about the potential recession in many major economies in the world is beginning to spook the, the foreign markets. But from what I'm hearing, it is a concern for even investors who are invested here in Nigeria's fixed income and, um, and equity market. Can you just talk us through how that is working out and the data that you're seeing that suggests that? Well, I mean, first of all, looking at uh, global economies, uh, you look at the major economies, you've, you've seen people like uh, China, where, I mean, their, their own GDP figures, their growth figures have slowed, I think the most in the last about 10 or 15 years. You've seen a slowdown in uh, manufacturing, car manufacturing figures, in countries like uh, India, even in China, and even in the US. So all of that dovetails... We did that in Germany as well. Yeah, and Germany too. Um, all of that dovetails down to crude oil prices. Because if you have a slowdown in the Chinese economy, which you know is one of the largest manufacturing economies, if not the largest, then um, definitely it's going to affect their demand for crude oil. Same thing with car sales. So if car sales are dropping, that means less demand for petrol, uh, or diesel, petroleum products basically, which naturally, you know, affects your crude oil prices. So we've seen, uh, and I'm bringing that down to Nigeria, we've seen um, a drove of investors leaving of recent, um, naturally worried about uh, what happens with crude oil prices, what happens with our reserve figures. So we've seen massive sell-off in the T-bills market, where yields have gone up, say, I mean, about 200 basis points or more uh, at the short end in the last... Uh, week and a half, and basically it's flight to safety. So at this point in time, the carry trade is irrelevant to them. So people are looking at 10-year U.S. Treasury, you know, uh, beginning to tra go towards 0%, but people are still living here and fly and uh, taking their money back there to go and invest in their low-yielding assets. So. How, how do the authorities <coughs> in Nigeria react to this, if you like? Um, because, of course, when you think about what the central bank can do, they can potentially hike rates. It may sound very interesting after the, the easing policy that we've seen over the last two meetings. Yeah. But would that be enough? Would that keep investors interested in Nigeria? So th there are two things to look at. One, you've had the growth story, which we've heard the central bank you know, uh, talk about over the last, uh, say, three, four, five months. It would be um, a, a, a big reversal for them to suddenly move and say, okay, no, we're suddenly hiking rates again at this point in time. Um, that that means the growth story goes away. That's number one. Then the second thing is, when there's flight to safety, people don't really care about the yields. Mm -hmm. They don't even care if they're making a loss when they're selling. They just want to get out. Right. So if you look at the way they've been selling T-bills, we've seen the yields go up to, what, uh, almost 13% so in the middle of the call, and there are people are still selling. A, so, a loss there. Uh, yeah, at that point in time, they're not really bothered. All they just want to do is, let's take our monies out. Let's be sure that we're safe as much as possible that the principal we brought in is safe and let's know that whatever the next thing down let's watch so raising your rates would make you attractive when they want to come back mm -hmm. so whenever things settle globally and they say okay look it's time to start looking at emerging markets which country should we go to then they can say oh well rates are what 16 70 percent in nigeria let's look at it but increasing it now won't stop the flight mm. no fair point okay but l let's talk a bit about the preparedness of the yeah. central bank to deal with this because you mentioned that they are living in droves right now uh, some people i have spoken to have suggested that they the number could be as much as 20 billion dollars in terms of the hot money in quotes yeah. that is in the system that potentially may be looking for his way out i wonder if you'll agree with that estimate but regardless how how prepared would you say the authorities in nigeria are for the exodus yeah. well so first of all we don't really know what that figure is. Uh, we've had 10 billion, we've had 15 billion. It's a clearly gathered figure by the central bank, so we really can't tell. But we know reserves are about 45. Um, it was reported recently that uh, during a roadshow, the uh, central bank had said that they are, they are not going to move the currency until we get to roughly about 30 billion. You know, so it was reported, uh, which gives us quite a bit of space. I think uh, we're in a much better position than we were, say, uh, in 2015 when uh, we had a basically similar situation. So I think the central bank is well equipped to some extent to manage the currency and uh, 
and also considering the fact that they've banned certain items, they're adding more items to the banned list, which basically means they are sort of reducing the demand for yeah from the reserves or the fiscal window. And um, I mean, we keep hoping that the uh, Dangote refinery comes on stream, uh, even though we know they've moved the uh, start dates by a few months. That would help also reduce the pressure on the currency, uh, on the FX reserves. But I think that we're in a much better position today with regards to reserves figure than we were in 2015 when we had this crisis. And I, I think they should also have expected this and should be able to basically uh, be able to sell and meet the demand. You, know, at the, at you, the you mentioned the sell-off in the TBO market. And of course, we did mention yeah. earlier that there's an OMO auction. I was wondering how you see yields evolving from here. We've already seen uh, a 200 basis point hike in those yields. Yeah. Do you think that we could see another 100 basis points? You know, where, where do you see things going? Well, so the, the hike is in the second market. Yes, so I know. the primary auction yesterday, the one year closed at 12%. Mm. So that hasn't really moved in tandem with where the second market uh, is trading right now. Uh, we have an OMO auction today. Uh, by the time I, I left, I mean, the result hadn't come out, but it's expected to close higher than it did the last auction. People are expecting maybe about 12.8. Um, I mean, we wait to see. We, where it comes out. Um, however, because of the volume being sold by the offshore investors, people are not really so bothered about the primary auction. Hey, look, if I can buy at 13, when the offshore guys are leaving, if they're selling at 12 at the auction, that's their business. Mm. I might as well go and buy at 13. So at 12, the primary market closed, they sold only 20 billion right. out of a hundred and something billion demand. Right. So how's all of this, sorry to cut in, but how's all of this, uh, if you can very quickly speak to this point, how is all of this impacting the currency, the exchange rate? Because we've heard of weakness in the I and E window yeah. to about 364. Potentially, could we move on to, say, 365? Well, as long as the central bank is determined to continue to um, defend the currency, and they have the ammunition to do that, then we don't expect it to move. Uh, I mean, 364, 365 possible, but I don't expect it to get to 370 levels mm -hmm. or thereabout. But we know that the cash market still remains largely liquid and offered at 360. So there's uh, basically, if you're selling that any window, but that seems like it's move now, don't you think? Well, uh, that yesterday was 360. Mm. So it's possible it moves. Uh, if any window continues to move, naturally the cash will eventually end up moving. All right. Let's leave it there. Thank you so much for your insight today.